Hi, Red Knights. Today, we're going to learn about friction and acceleration. We're gonna start in our science textbooks to read to learn about these two concepts. Let's get started. Friction. A block slides on the floor. It then slows down and stops. Why does the block slow down and stop? A contact force called friction is acting on the block. Friction is a force that occurs when one object rubs against another. Friction pushes against moving objects and causes them to slow down. Different surfaces produce different amounts of friction. Rough surfaces, such as sandpaper, produce a lot of friction. Smooth surfaces such as ice, usually produce little friction. Caption. This water slide is smooth, so it has little friction. Increased friction. Sometimes it is helpful to increase friction. People use rough or sticky materials to increase friction. The brakes on a bike use rubber pads to increase friction. When you squeeze the brake handles, the brake pads press against the rim of the wheel. The friction between the pad and the rim causes the bike to stop. Caption. Friction between the brake pad and the bike rim stops the bike. Here you have the brake pad and here you have the rim. This metal piece squeezes the brake pads on both sides to put pressure and friction on this rim. Reducing friction. At other times, it is useful to reduce friction. People use slippery things to reduce friction. Oil is often put on moving parts of machines to reduce friction between them. Without oil, friction between the moving parts of the engine will cause the parts to wear out. If you have been to a hockey game, you might have seen an ice resurfacer used to polish the ice. This machine puts down a thin layer of water to make the ice smoother. This layer of water reduces the friction and helps the players skate faster. Caption, this machine cleans and smooths the surface of the ice, reducing friction. Boys and girls, you can feel friction too. If you put your hands together in front of you, palm to palm, and move your hands back and forth really fast, you can feel your hands become hot. This heat is being generated because of the friction between your two hands. Now let's talk about acceleration. Types of forces, defining acceleration. You can measure the distance an object moves. You can also measure the distance it takes the object to move that distance. From these distance and time measurements, you can determine the speed of the object's motion. The motion of an object is described by its speed and its direction. Speed and direction can change. Look at the speed skaters in the photograph. These skaters race around a track. They speed up and slow down. They turn to their left at both ends of the oval track. Any change of their speed or direction is called acceleration. Think about the gas pedal in a car. Another name for the gas pedal is the accelerator. The pedal is also known by this term because it causes the car to accelerate or change speed. Pressing on the pedal makes the car move faster. Releasing the pedal lets the car slow down.
caption. The skaters accelerate when they change speed and direction around the track. Forces affect acceleration. To jump, you push against the ground. To jump higher, you push harder. If you swim, you know that to move faster, you must push harder against the water. The size of a force affects an object's acceleration. A greater force gives more acceleration. The mass of the object matters too. If you apply the same force, an object with more mass will accelerate more slowly. In the first drawing below, one person pulls the load. The load accelerates. In the second drawing, two people pull the same load. Now, it accelerates twice as fast. Why? Two people apply twice the force to the load. What happens in the third drawing? One person pulls a load that is twice as large. She uses the same amount of force as in the first drawing. The load accelerates half as fast. Skill Builder Read a diagram. Look at the green arrows to determine which load is accelerating faster. So down here we have the diagram. We have three trials. Trial 1, Trial 2, and Trial 3. In the first trial, she is pulling the load by herself. And you can see that the green arrow only goes about halfway. In the second trial, there is two people pulling the load. With two people, there is greater force than there was in the first trial. Do you see how this arrow showing force is only about half of the force that we now have with two people? In the third trial, they add another pumpkin. So there's two pumpkins, which makes the load heavier. So now in this trial, she has a heavier load and there's only one person to create force. So this green arrow shows that there is only a tiny bit of movement, a little bit of acceleration. So if we compare the first trial where there was one person to create force and the second trial where there was only one person to create force, I can determine that the load with more mass creates less acceleration even with the same amount of force. There are two ways for you to experiment with friction and acceleration. If you click on the box that says friction, you will open up a, to a new window to experiment with friction. The tab will open up to this screen and you're going to click on the box that says friction. Here, you can have your person push the box to create force. You can make the box heavier by increasing its mass. To do that, you can place objects on top of the box to make it heavier. Because this is heavier, you're going to need much more force to push the box. You can just click and drag the objects around. Over here, you can play around with the friction. You can make it so that there is no friction. And do you see how it created the surface to look like ice? Ice is smooth and slippery, so there's going to be less friction. Let's see what happens. The box just keeps going and going. Let's reset. Now let's put lots of friction. The ground is now like gravel. Let's see what happens when they try to push. It takes a lot of applied force to get that box moving across the gravel. 
So you can play around with this simulator to experiment with friction. You can play around with a mass to see how heavy something is and how far you can move it with how much force that you need to apply. You can decrease the friction on the ground, which makes the surface smooth and slippery. Or you can increase the friction to a certain level to see what type of force it takes to push things on that type of friction surface. You can also hop over to the other simulator for acceleration. Let's check that out. When you click on the tab in your notebook, you'll be brought to the screen where you can click on acceleration. This looks a lot like the other game that we just played, except now you can measure acceleration. You can click on these separate variables to measure speed, acceleration, mass, all this fun, crazy stuff, right? And down here, it will tell you how much stuff weighs. Now, in America, we use pounds to measure weight. Um, they're using kilograms in here, um, which is just another way to measure weight. Um, but here we have a 50 kilogram box and we can put a 100 kilogram bucket of water. Together, there are 150 kilograms. Let's see if we can use force to push this box. Now, remember this friction dial is in the middle. So, so this isn't a completely smooth surface. It does have some friction. Move, pushing, 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 it is not moving. Oh, it's barely moving. All right. Now let's reduce the friction. Let's see what happens. Oop, I want to keep that there. Moves a lot easier. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a whole lot of fun experimenting with friction and acceleration using these simulators. You can also find objects around your house like toy matchbox cars and other objects that you can push and pull to experiment with friction on different surfaces and to see its acceleration. All right, my third grade scientists, bye for now.